All right, Carter's Corner, back again. Back straight back. No, that's really terrible. Um, so Carter's Corner, Travis Carter is back here with Bill across the chair from me. And on the line, we have Bass from Health Australia Party. Bass, can you hear us? Yes, I can, Travis. Thanks for having me. Hey, not a problem at all. So first of all, your last name. I totally forgot it was T Tadros. <laughs> yes, you did really well. It's, it is Tadros. It's phonetic. Fantastic. Um, and, yeah, and it, it, does, it does sound like it's spelt and spelt like it sounds. Fantastic. <laughs> no, I'm, um, my wife's uh, Vietnamese. And the way they spell her name, it's like loan, like a car loan. And she oh, yes. hates it with a passion when people call her loan. So we actually changed the spelling so people don't butcher the spelling so much. So, um, yeah, no, I totally understand when people get your name wrong. So I, I do apologize if I do butcher it. Now, um, you are actually running for the Health Australia Party in the upper house in the agricultural region. So pretty much everything north of Ellenbrook. Um <laughs> South Geraldton, you know, is all good. Um, it's, it's quite large territory, yeah. It's the size of the state of Victoria. So it spans from Esperance through the Wheat Belt mm -hmm. um, and all the way up through Geraldton to Calbarry. Yep. So it's a, effectively just the, the Wheat Belt. Um, so, <laughs> with, oh, you just said that. Sorry, I'm trying to read your, your notes that you sent through to us earlier today. Um, so yeah. with the Health yeah. Australia Party, obviously with everything that's going on with COVID and all that sort of stuff, what does the Health Australia Party, what, what do they bring to this election? What are they hoping to achieve? Um, well, obviously, we, we have very, very big ambitions um, mm -hmm. in terms of what we'd like to see happen. We do have a, a vision, and uh, um, it's a bright one. It's a, it's a, it's a vision of healthy people. Um, and mm -hmm. we, we noticed that if we just went with the focus on a healthy person, let's say you, Travis, mm -hmm. if we wanted Travis to be healthy, um, we can't just focus on your personal health because all the other elements impact that. So, for example, the environment impacts Travis's health. Mm -hmm. The economy, you know, if you were struggling with, with finances, that would impact your, your health and it will also impact your household's health. Um, you know, clean air, clean water, clean food. So we couldn't be a single focus party. We had mm -hmm. to basically think about all these elements um, and encompass them. And we, we do that really well with the five pillars, uh, which is healthy people, healthy environment, economy, democracy, society. And, and it looks like we couldn't have come at a, <laughs> at a better time. It's like now or never. Yeah, to be honest, timing. we uh, we need a lot more variety in our politics at the moment. And if the news is anything to go by, the, the government's having an absolute field day. So um, one of the big things um, that has been coming up recently, um, uh, where did you put in your list? Sorry, I'm just having a quick read. Um, so, one right. of the, the, um, so how do you guys hope to achieve... The, the, the connection between all the, the healthy body, healthy mind, the spirit, and how do you get them all together to bring everything to to fix the health of everything, especially at the moment when our farmers, the suicide rates within our farmers is through the roof. The suicide rates caused because the COVID lockdowns is just, is the, the increases is massive. Um, I heard a report last year there was over 3,300 male suicides. Um, I'm not sure about female suicides. I haven't seen any stats on that one yet. So, what does the Health Australia Party hope to achieve to fix some of that? So how, how would you like to fix it? Well, the, the first uh, step is always the first step, Travis, and that's to get elected. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so true, we, true. Okay, okay yes, true. In, yep. We've got to come in in this election, and the, the state election opens up uh, sooner than most people think. So the 22nd of February is when the early centres open up for voting, for early mm -hmm. voting. Yep. Um, and then the 13th of March is obviously the... The, the finale of the, the state elections. So first thing is we need to get seats in parliament. If we can get a couple of seats in, then we can hope to balance things out. We know for a fact that we're not going to, you know, win overall power and become government for WA. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just not possible at this stage. Um, the, the biggest concern for anybody that's listening uh, that, that values democracy in our society um, is that if the Labor Party has more seats in the upper house and lower house, it won't be a democracy anymore. It'll be much more leaning towards a uh, dictatorship um, and it will completely compromise uh, our systems of 
democracy. Yeah, so you're getting that, a lot of nods from Bill on that one. So he agrees wholeheartedly with you on that one. So Good on you, Bill. Yeah. Well, yes, just be careful with your neck. I'm very careful <laughs> when I speak to people that are very agreeable that they don't put their neck out. Um, so, look, the, the other thing is we, we've got to have a holistic approach towards mm-hmm. life and t- towards everything that we're having. We're living in a very, very interesting time. Um, if anything that, uh, you know, the, the, the last interviewer, the person that you've interviewed just before from mm-hmm. Europe, from Greece, yep. um, if that's anything to go by, then, then we've really got to be careful about the, the danger that society faces at this time. And what we're seeing at large, because mindset, mental health, uh, suicide rate is, is something that's very big on my radar and something that mm-hmm. I've been doing. I left the corporate world 10 years ago to, to just specifically focus on that to help people dealing with stress and other things. And if, if we don't take all those matters seriously, where we're heading is, is not a very <laughs> fun place to be. Yep. We're already experiencing that with mandatory masks and, and things of that liking. I'd love to see the, the chief, the deputy chief health um, doctor uh, Dr. Andrew Robertson, mm-hmm. um, show us the scientific evidence of where masks are actually going to prevent uh, the transmission of this virus well, um, or anything of that kind. That would be brilliant. Yeah, I just want to quickly jump in here because sure. it's really interesting that you brought that topic up. There was a mm-hmm. article uh, from the chief health officer, uh, I think it was June 2020. So it's a very recent article. Uh, it's when the first lot of lockdowns happened and everyone was clearing yep. the shelves of toilet paper and masks and all that sort of stuff. And, and yep. WA just went crazy. Um, yep. He did an article about how healthy people should not be wearing a mask. And then fast forward I, six and months. And I agree. Yeah, fast totally forward six months, that. and why this sudden there's a massive change in the stance from the chief, chief health officer. Um, yeah. So I'm yeah. very, very interested to see why. I'd, I'd love to know why he's done a total black backflip on that issue. Now, it, it's really good that you did bring that up because when we were talking Thanks. during the week about organizing this show, I did flick a question through to you. Um, I did yeah. want to see uh, the... Obviously, you can't answer 100% for the party, but for, for yourself, um, I ask you to have a look at a bit of the legislation, which is the Health Act uh, 2015. It's legislation that was snuck through by the Liberal government. Um, I think it was the Barnett government at the time. Uh, in yeah. particular, section 138, I think it is from memory. Dwayne, you can confirm this one for me. It's the one where the government has the right to force any medical procedure onto a person during a state of emergency. Um, mm. At the moment, in the community, there's a massive call to get that removed because there's no checks and balances to to even that out. So there's no one who... So the chief health officer isn't elected in and he can assign yes. a health officer to say, right, uh, sorry, I've just had it confirmed, 158, section 158, part C um, sure. of the Health Act. So the person who decides the medical procedure is not elected in. The person who assigns the officer who will go out and tell someone, right, you need to have um, your big toe removed or you need to have a lobotomy or you need to be castrated or, or whatever it is, is not elected and doesn't even need to be a medical officer. They don't even need a medical training background or anything like that. You can pick any Joe Blow off the street. And on top of that, they don't need to identify themselves. Do yeah. you think this yeah. is something that the Health Australia Party is willing to take up to say, right, we need these to do this democratically, we need to make sure that there's, there's sufficient checks and balances in place to make sure the legislation that was passed and released in previous years and under different governments is actually balanced and fair for the Australian people. Yeah, well, we definitely need that to be actually removed because there's no room in in the life and in the society of a of a free country, which is mm-hmm. what most people come to Australia for, is a free country. Um, there's no room for uh, anything like that to exist Mm -hmm. where somebody comes into your house and forces you. I've read that particular um, article that you've referred to, Mm -hmm. um, and it is horrific. There there are people in the community that have written to us and that have expressed their horror um, of of just the thought of it, somebody forcing themselves into their house, removing objects like, you know, pants and whatever. And it could actually be, you were saying, it could be an official that's representative of the deputy chief of health. Mm-hmm. Well, it could actually be a police officer. It can't, I think it's stated, or at least somebody mentioned that in one of the, their concerned letters to us. And so I don't know who brought that in, 
and if they were in their right mind or, or what they were thinking and why that snuck in um, at such opportune timing um, mm. is also an interesting thing. So these definitely these things need to, to be removed and all these other ideas of particular laws uh, being passed in the middle of the night without anybody's consent or consultation, mm. that needs to be checked as well. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we, we, I don't really know who's doing that and who agrees with that and whoever wrote that would they agree for that to happen to their family and, and their family members? Yep. Um, I don't think they'd be nodding their head, right? So, yeah. so we, we need, in fairness, to, to be reviewing the risks um, of what we're putting our community through from a mental health standpoint, uh, which is deteriorating fast because of fear and manipulation. Um, even the mask idea, just to go back to that for a moment, there are people that are suffering because they have panic attacks and so, and there are people that have medical exemptions. But unfortunately, when they walk around, if they were going to their local shopping center or post office, they also suffer because other people are looking at them and discriminating towards them because they're not wearing their mask. Yeah, very and, true. And that's causing a lot of stress. Are you nodding again, Bill? Is that I, you I am, <laughs> because a mate of mine said that he had his mask down one day yep. uh, because he was having a bit of trouble breathing while, whilst he was going for a walk. And some yep. elderly gentleman blasted him for not having his mask on. So yeah. we've yeah. even got civilian uh, police out there dictating or, or policing it as well. Um, yeah, and it's sad because it's it's another divide, right? And and this is what mm. we've got to really be careful of. We've got to unite people and stand together as a community rather than divide people. Yep, I hundred percent agree with you on that one. And I know you don't like the head nodders, but when you say something smart, sorry, I have to agree. And it's really funny what Bill <laughs> said because. I I don't know if you heard, I've got a medical exemption. I don't have to wear a mask because of my asthma. Um, I'm yeah. a stay-at-home father, so I walked my two daughters to school, So and my yeah. youngest walked back home with me. Um, yeah. I got balled up by the school president, um, principal today. Yeah. Uh, had yeah. a few, sorry, not today, yesterday evening, had a few very choice words to say in front of me, in front of all the kids. And he did oh, not no. like it when I told him no. <laughs> so he got yeah. a little bit, got the steam off him on that one. So... Um, yeah. It's yeah. a shame because he's actually a really, really cool teacher. Like I really, he's done a wonderful job with the school. With and I don't live in the greatest area. I live near Kelmscott, um, so there's a yeah. few yeah. troubled young kids down there. And he's done a sure. phenomenal job. Now we've had a question come in from a caller or, or like a, yeah. a viewer. I, I, it's a good thing we're past the language bit. So this is <laughs> directly from a, a viewer. This is not asked in any way. Uh, and quote. If a virus is so small it can't be seen with a microscope, then isn't a mask like a, and I'm going to paraphrase, a penis in a trouser leg to a vagina? <laughs> well, I love their colourful language, but... I had, to, I I had just... to tidy it up a bit there. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate... Well, I appreciate both you um, and the, that particular listener or viewer for writing in and, and stating that, the or asking it <laughs> whichever way it goes. I had a very, very... Um, interesting conversation with a PhD in immunology and microbiology mm -hmm. so that I can get a scientific response and answer. Mm -hmm. And he used a metaphor that's not too dissimilar to what <laughs> that viewer actually said. <laughs> I wonder if it he was your it, doctor that sent it through. <laughs> it could actually be him disguised because he's not allowed to state his opinion for fear of losing his job. That's the kind of world we live in, which is mm. absolutely horrific. Yeah, so freedom. he said, yeah, freedom of yeah we're... <laughs> Doesn't as long as it's freedom of speech, academic, yeah. e exactly. And so he said something along the lines of, "It's like using chicken wire fence to stop smoke." Yeah, I'll, I'll pay so, that one. I'll pay that. Yeah, mm. and and he he basically said they are completely ineffective. If you look at the you know World Health Organization, it states that as well. Um, and they've, I mean, they've done a couple of backflips on things. They, they'd say one thing, the next day they change it. Oh, we didn't mean that. But at the end of the day. Um, if we go back to, to the very earlier statement that you said, which is a brilliant one from June 2020, mm. where the same <laughs> Deputy Chief Health for WA stated that having masks on healthy people is not recommended, mm. I mean, that in itself really should state that that would be a perfect statement for all those people out there that are calling and, and, and harassing and um, are pulling people up on it. Um, and I think the issue is there are a lot of people that agree with what we're saying here, but people want to fit in, and that's just human nature. It's, it's human mm -hmm. psychology. So a lot of people are wearing it 
not just to be compliant, but it's more like they don't want to stand out. And, and that in itself is a little sad because I'm okay with standing out. I'm, I'm actually okay with um, not wearing it. And I've, I've gotten pulled up a few times and, and I've said I'm exempt. And you could be too if you choose to research it and have a look at how it affects you. Or you could choose to wear it. That's completely up to you as well. That, that They're both your call. And that comes back to free will hmm. yeah. <laughs> and you know, freedom of choice. And no one, I mean, th- there are some crazy things happening in America where the, their chief of health has basically said you have to wear two masks. Now you have to wear three masks. Okay. And, and I'm, j- I'm just wondering if, if they're trying to see how far they can take this joke and when people are going to yeah. say, no, I'm I not going to wear I wonder if they anymore. really are pulling the piss. Yeah, anyway, so I, I hate to cut you in here, but we do need to sure. quickly jump onto a message from our sponsors because obviously they do keep the lights on here. So it is yep. 89.7, uh, Travis Carter on Carter's Corner. We've got Bill across the road from us and on the phone all the way from the Health Party, uh, Health Australia Party we got Bass on the phone as well. So please stick around and we'll be right back after this. Carter's Corner, Travis Carter, obviously. We've got Bill across the road with us and we've got Bass on the line. Bass, welcome back. Thank you for being with us today. You've been absolutely awesome. Now, I have to say, I think that's one of the, the song I just played was Tom Petty, Free Falling. And I think it's one of the, the songs that always gets stuck in my head for free balling. <laughs> Talking of free balling, I've heard the um, the new U.S. president has taken to wearing two masks. Oh, there you go. Like, yeah, talk about free ball. No, um. So, but <laughs> what what's the purpose of wearing two masks? Like, is it I'm not to sure. make yourself look in, like a fool? In the context of what you're saying, maybe he's wearing one on it, over his forehead. <laughs> oh, that 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 was not me. <laughs> okay, I, I like that one. Raw but funny. Yeah, very raw. Yeah. So it's awesome. Now, we, we do get, so just so the, the listeners are clear, so we've got the Facebook. You can look us up on, so Carter's Corner on the good old Facebook. The logo is like a picture of a microscope, um, microscope, a microphone. I think medical is in my brain today. Uh, you can look us up on the YouTube. So just look up Travis Carter. There's a picture of myself and my daughter. Um, really super, what, my all-time favorite photo, so I had to use it for it. Uh, and obviously, you can listen to the station live, 897fm.com.au. Now, on my stalk book, I did get a personal message sent through to me. And someone has actually asked us, being, you guys being uh, the Australian Health Party, sorry, Health Australia Party, um, yep. and also with the recent, uh, I, I say recent, like last year or the year before, the legalization of medical cannabis coming through. Um, there's been a bit of a call recently that kind of got swamped out with the whole COVID thing. There's a lot of people who want to start decrim. Uh, I don't know if decriminalizing is the right word for it, but um, bring- legalization. Yeah, delegalization of marijuana, yep. especially in regards to uh, medical uses, treatment of depression, um, anxiety, and things like that, and also for people who do suffer terminal cancer to help deal yep. with the um, the nausea, vomiting, and all that that they're dealing with. So with the Health Australia Party, have they got much of a stance on that? Definitely, definitely. There there is a very big important role that nature plays in our health. So when we talk about health, it's not about just being free of disease. We need to think about a holistic approach where it's Mm -hmm. it's a healthy being that has a healthy body, mind, spirit, uh, you know, and and even culture. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, of course, hemp or or, uh, cannabis, or CBD oil mm-hmm. um, is, is very important and it does play a, a role. Um, like you said, you, you know, cancer is one of those things. And what a lot of people don't understand with especially CBD oil, um, the benefits that it has, um, and, it, and it doesn't have any, so people don't get high or anything like that because mm-hmm. people quite often ask that question. Um, th- th- there's some really great benefits in using herbs and in using nature and in coming back to the essence of, of you know, as, as a tribe, as a human tribe. Of course, these are the things that we've done until somebody said it's not a good idea and, um, and then we become a, a society of prescription mm-hmm. or subscription. Okay. And, so, and it's prescri- yep. so, so we, have a, we actually have a policy <laughs> to, to be direct in answer. There is a policy on... Uh, cannabis and and we um, it would be something that we proudly uh, want to work on with with obviously the right people we've got the mm-hmm. right research there's enough scientific backing 
um, on, on what we're talking about here. And it is something we're very passionate about. Mm -hmm. So just to be clear, NWA, we have already decriminalized medical marijuana. You can go down to your doctor, get a script for it. Um, it's extremely long process, very expensive. It's not on the Medicare rebate system yet. But there's also a bit of a been a push because alcohol is a very, very bad substance. Uh, alcohol yes. addiction, um, the domestic violence that is caused through alcoholism and stuff like that is really, really bad. There's been yep. a massive push to decrimin uh, decriminalize marijuana. The hey, let's get high and happy marijuana, not just the uh, medical cannabis. Oh, you mean the smoke, the yeah. smoke side of it? Yeah, yep. the yep. smoke side of it as well. So obviously, you guys are supportive of the medical side of things. What's your stance yeah. on the normal everyday? Go down to the corner and go buy it when you're in Rockingham uh, marijuana side <laughs> of things. I'll probably talk more about my own personal stance. I still think smoking anything is not really healthy for you. Mm -hmm. But if we were to compare it to what you were saying about alcoholism and, and people abusing alcohol, alcohol is, is probably a worse of a drug. Mm -hmm. And and that's quite legal. It's on every um, you know corner with, with a bottle shop. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and the only thing that um, governments currently have on it is, oh, yeah, we'll tax people higher to deter that. Well, you know that doesn't work. And... Uh, well, we love and our obviously, <laughs> yeah, we outside. do love our beer. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> as, as long as it's within reason, um, I think that the big thing that a lot of people don't realize the danger with alcohol is it does actually alter your brain chemical balance. Mm -hmm. This is why it changes your metabolism, mm -hmm. um, you know, alters your perceptions. But, but it does over time have a huge, there's people that are, um, have taken lots of alcohol and if they cut it out, they could have um, a mild it's ketosis sort of uh, episode. Yes. I, I don't know if you've ever heard of that. So that's how dangerous it can be. Yeah, I've got an uncle who uh, enjoys his alcohol a little bit too much. So um, if you have a look at places like, and this is the reason I was leading into this question is uh, the sure. government has to try and find a way to dig ourselves out of this economic hole that we've created. The amount of tax right. revenue we get from alcohol is staggering. It's huge. The amount of tax revenue we get from cigarette smokes is huge, but also you then have the offset on the health burden that it's creating. So mm -hmm. I, I read a report once that um, three out of four people have either tried uh, cannabis or is currently smoking cannabis on a regular basis. The amount of tax revenue, especially in Australia, if you decriminalized it, um, regulated it, taxed it, the amount of revenue we could generate for the government is astronomical. It's huge the amount of money they could make from this. And that would be a really great stepping stone to get into clearing some of this debt that the COVID has caused for us. So there has been, like I said, there's been a few questions about on my old Facebook page. Uh, in past shows, I have spoken about it before. Um, and my stance on, I think, uh, like I said, mar marijuana should be one of those things that decriminalize and treated the same as alcohol. So there's tax on it. You can't drink and uh, you can't smoke and drive. And I think the California's way they've done it is actually a very, very good stance. So it's a good way to clear some of these debts. So we're coming up for 35 minutes past seven. Um, is there anything else, because we've got to wrap up in a minute, is there anything else that you really, really want to get out there leading into your election coming up? Um, my understanding is nominations actually close on the 13th to become a candidate. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that's exactly right. So I think the, I think it's actually the 12th. Uh, so from uh, the 3rd to the 12th. Yeah, sorry, is, yes, is you're right. It is the 12th to Friday. It's the 12th, 13th to Saturday. Yeah, yeah. and and then, then obviously there's a there's another step in that process. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure if, if you're aware of that, but on the 15th, another thing closes, which is all the preferences that the parties have for one another. Mm -hmm. And I don't think enough people kind of understand that process. Um, but it is an important one for people to educate themselves on, I, I think, because it can alter all sorts of different things. Especially um, but, in the upper house. The preferences yeah. are super important in the upper house. So that's the well, legislative council. And that's where you're running in the agriculture region. Exactly. And, yep. and so probably what I'd like to talk about is the Health Australia Party has those five pillars and anybody could look up our policies and what we stand for through healthaustraliaparty.com.au mm -hmm. um, and just become familiar with, with who's running, who are the candidates in their region. Um, feel free to, to email us um, on the WA branch email. And, um, you know, we, the, the idea what I think Health Australia Party stands for is something that we've been missing for a long time, which is a community. Mm -hmm. spirit within politics and 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 that's how i've seen it so i was in community tv like you guys are in community radio mm -hmm. and i became very passionate about being the voice for community 
And I interviewed Health Australia Party's um, WA president and state secretary and, and actually really sensed that they're real people, mm-hmm. real red-blooded people, human beings uh, that care about other people, that care about their family's future, their children's future, their grandchildren's future, and they want good things for the community. Um, they're not institutionalised, um, you know, lifelong politicians that have a, a particular um, drive that is, you know, towing the party line. Mm-hmm. And we've seen other parties, <laughs> when somebody steps up and actually listens to what the community and starts to express it, how they try and pull them back in line and, and the media, the mainstream media crucifies them, right? Yeah, and it's so, very interesting you say something about that. We do have sure. a special guest for later in the show. I won't spoil it now. Um, yeah. And I've actually got a bit of a, a story to tell everyone after we finish with our next guest about the media and how they try to crucify people who step off party lines. So, Yes, um, well, they, they, I mean, that's been in the recent headlines with Craig Kelly, for example, without mentioning too many names. Uh, but, it's not Craig Kelly, by the way. I'd love to get oh, Craig Kelly on, but yeah, <laughs> no, they, they haven't said to come on the show yet. So, no, yeah. no it's more local. So, I mean, well, that, that's where I developed my passion. After giving them a chance to voice their opinions and hearing what they've got to say, I realize there's actually a lot of values that align. And, and I've always been one to shy away and not really care much for um, politics because it seems like it is really heavily controlled by the two bigger players, the red and the blue. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's kind of a monopoly in, in my view. And when you do go to vote, you look at it and go, which is the lesser evil here? Yep. Um, and, and I hate that feeling. So after meeting Health Australia Party, it gave me the, the, the feeling of there's actually a, a hope and and a real choice here for healthy people that are really genuinely interested in Mm. taking care of other people's health and the community and the family in that community. And that's why I look at them more of a, like a community spirited party rather than a political party that's the traditional sense. You know, we're not out to try and put anybody down um, to make ourselves look better. Uh, We're focused on the solutions that we can bring. Um, and, And in my case, it's the farmers. We've really got to care for the farmers that are in isolation, which leads to you know, mental health, stress. They've already got many things that they're battling with in terms of you know, soil, water issues. Mm-hmm. Um, but now with these border closures, they're, they're dealing with um, unemployment. So they're dealing with they can't, get, you know, they can't get the right labor at the right time. Um, some farmers have expressed to me that certain things, like lettuce, for example, if they're not um, taken out of the ground as quickly as possible when they're ready, they, they, they all go off uh, basically all black um, and can't be sold or, or, or used. So it's things like that. And, and if we listen more to these farmers, because what a lot of people are missing is the connection between health, nutrition, and agriculture and how mutual that is um, and the, the effects that they have on each other. If, if you don't have the right nutrition in the food, how do we get nutrition within the human body? Yep. And the <laughs> so, one thing else I want to add to that is a, sure. most, a vast majority of Australians are extremely proud to be Australians. And you've got to remember, yeah. Australia was created off the back of our farmers. So the wool industry yeah. and all that side of stuff. So we, these guys who are struggling now, they need their, their help. So one thing, because we are now right up on time, I, we do need to get a message from our sponsors. But one thing I do need to really put out there to the listeners today if you're upset with Labor and the Liberals, but you don't know who to vote for because you don't know if any of these other smaller parties can actually manage government and stuff like that, remember one thing. Every single primary vote that someone gets, whether it's a minor party, a major party, whoever, as long as they get 4% primary, the government pays them back about $2.50 per vote. So when you're looking at uh, um, the federal seat of Brand, there was 106,000 people in there. So Madeline King, who won the seat, I think she got 44% in the primary vote. So she's looking to claim back anywhere up to, what, um, about, let's say, 40000 by $2.50. So you're looking between eighty to $90,000, and that's just one seat in the federal election. Then with the state election, you've got all the minor seats below it. So if you really, really, really want to send a message to all the majors out there to stop just looking at us as a cash count and start looking to represent us again. Send them a message. Vote number one in people like the Health Australia Party or the miners out there. I think there's uh, no mandatory vaccination in the West Australian Party. It doesn't really matter because what happens is you're taking every time you vote for a minor or an independent before you vote for the majors, you're giving them money back so they can run again, first of all, and you're taking that money away from the majors so that they can abuse the system less. 
and then you mm. put whoever you want in government as number two because if the minor doesn't get in, your, flow, your vote flows down in the lower house. So you still don't get the government you want, except you're sending a very loud and a very clear message to the majors, enough's enough. Start representing us, otherwise we don't start putting these minors in. And so it's, that's the last thing I want to really, really stress. So Bass, you've been phenomenal. Um, anything comes up in the future, make sure you give us a call. We'll get you back on the airways. Um, well, I've, I've enjoyed this so much, Travis. I want to do another segment with you. Maybe we can educate people how to vote because a lot of people are confused about how to fill in the papers. Yeah, so. oh, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> but what I think with that one, I'm more than happy for you to come in once the lockdown's up. We'll get you into the studio. Uh, and sure. then what we also think is we need to... Um, yeah, definitely do it, but we'll do it after because I've got to do the draws for your, your ballot position and then we can actually yeah. use your seat as an example and we can just run through the figures. So if you vote here and he doesn't get in or the, the it's a gay lady and she doesn't get in, so this is what happens with your votes and stuff like that. So you can actually walk us all the way through it. So again, um, make sure you, you follow it up on the Facebook. So for mine, it's uh, Carter's Corner on the Facebook. Uh, Bass, do you have your own political Facebook? Yes, it's just Bass Tadros, so B A W S, and then my surname Tadros, T A D R O S, yep. and you'll find a public figure page on uh, on Facebook. Fantastic! So make sure you jump out there. Um, Facebook is shocking for the algorithm. So even if you're not a Health Australia party, please give it a like and a share because it starts tricking the systems and it starts helping uh, people like Bass getting out there, get their message heard, and stuff like that. So fantastic, Bass! Thank you very very much for coming on today. We're going to jump over to a message from our sponsors. And we'll have Charles Smith, member of the Legislative Council for the West Australia Party, up after this. So this is Carlos Corner, and we'll talk to you soon.